Um, I gotta tell you, whenever I speak at chapel, um, I am not a Mr. B and I'm not a Mr. Glasser and I'm not a Mr. Wiley. I'm not um, polished. I don't do this as my vocation often like they have done for lots of years. And um, so I get real nervous. And uh, Mr. Eaton had sent us the schedule several weeks ago. So I've known, okay, October 6th, this is what we're going to do, and this is what I'm going to talk about, and I had it in my mind, and I was prepared, and then that awkward moment that God says, oh no, 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 you need to talk about this, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, God, here we go, so with that in mind, today I'm going to share with you um, what God's laid on my heart, and um, that is unity in the community, everybody say unity in the community. Unity in the community. And it's based on Acts chapter 2. Everybody say Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Okay, so one of my favorite passages from Acts chapter 2 uh, comes from verses 42 to 47. And we're going to read that all together. There we go. Um, they devoted themselves. Oh, all together. That means not just. Here we go. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and the signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold the property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They were bread in their homes and ate together with glad, sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just pray this morning that I get out of the way, Father, and that you speak through me, and uh, that these words of truth are able to pierce our hearts, uh, just like they did all those years ago um, to the people who were listening about you. We love you guys. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so I hope you can see why this is one of my favorite passages, because it's about unity in the community. And one of my favorite activities as a um, Christian is um, going to church camp. My goodness, I went to church camp my whole life. My kids went to church camp their whole lives. Uh, going on retreats. How many of you have ever been on a mission trip? Raise your hand if you've been on a mission trip of some kind. Well, one time, uh, my, one of my very first mission trips um, was to downtown Hartford, Connecticut. How many of you have ever been to Hartford, Connecticut? I had never been either. So, Hartford, Connecticut, um, it was kind of, um, wasn't necessarily the nicest part of town, and um, it was a great relationship-building trip on, um, we worshipped in a different way than we're used to worshipping, um, we worshipped with uh, people of different races, we worshipped with uh, people that, um, honestly, they believed in some things that were a little bit different from uh, what our group believed, and so it was a great time of learning and a great time of unity for everyone. We came back, and just like after church camp, you know, everybody's like, oh, Team Jesus, it's all good, here we go. And then what happens is like a day or two later, you have that emotional crash. Raise your hand if you've ever gone to camp or a mission trip or something like that. You come home and a couple days later, you have that like emotional crash. Yeah, so some of you know what I'm talking about. You, uh, you're all in, it's all to Jesus, unity in the community, here we go. And you get home and everything starts slipping back into that, that normal. Hey, and you guys know what I'm talking about today. There are so many people today around us, and, and um, whether that's in the grocery store, or whether it's online, or whether you're driving, there are so many people who are so angry, and so frustrated, and so sad, and so lost, and so distracted. You know what I'm talking about? Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. All your hands should be up because we know what it's like in our culture today. It's not necessarily the most positive and it's not necessarily the most uplifting. So why can't we seem to pull it together and have unity in the community like what we're told about in Acts chapter 2? So 
let me share with you a little bit of the, the behind the scenes story. What led up to this? Okay, so there was this big crowd that's gathered, and I did some research, and uh, they said that it could be upwards of 100,000 people there. They were all there for uh, the Feast of Pentecost, the Festival of Pentecost. And um, there were a lot of religious people there. Back in the day, when we talk religious people, we're talking about the devout Jews. And uh, they knew the Torah. They knew the Old Testament. They knew what, what was recorded. And so there were all these Jewish people there. There were all these recent converts to uh, the Jewish faith. And the next thing you know, the, the, the crowd, they're just hearing all these voices speaking in their own language. Now understand, there were people there from like 15 different regions. So there were all these people who were in, in different languages, but suddenly they started hearing people talking their own language. Well, these people were the apostles. Now, if you remember, let's even go back a little further, when Jesus called the apostles, uh, the disciples, they were just ordinary people, tax collector, fisherman. They, they were just your average Joe people. And next thing you know, these people are speaking in a foreign language that they don't even know about. So all the people were so perplexed that they even accused the apostles of being drunk. And it's like it's early in the morning. And so um, this is all after Jesus ascended to the heaven, and so they weren't drunk. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And you remember how this goes. You know, you've all um, probably been in some new school where you've learned about um, when the Holy Spirit came down, they were all in the room. There's this whirling, rushing wind sound. Next thing you know, all the apostles, they have this, what looks like a tongue of fire above their heads. And that was the symbolism of the Holy Spirit being there. When they were filled with the Holy Spirit, then they were able to speak in these languages. Okay? Not a smile. Everybody follow me? Y'all remember the story? Here we go. Okay, so there are all these people at the festival. There's chaos breaking out. 100,000 people. Who's speaking? They're drunk. What's going on? And Peter, the Apostle Peter, steps up to the plate to put some order to this chaos. And he's like, look, it's 9 o'clock in the morning. These people are not drunk. What I want to tell you is the truth. I want to tell you what has happened here. And so he goes on to tell these devout Jews and these recent converts about the truth of Jesus. And he was talking to them about fulfilled prophecy. Because um, remember, all these Jewish people knew the Old Testament stuff. And they knew what was predicted and what was said was going to happen. And he went on to tell them about the Messiah. And the Messiah is Jesus. And he was sharing with them that the Holy Spirit that he promised would come, that's what has come. That's what has happened here. And he went on to declare very definitively the truth of Jesus. And he shared with them that this guy that they murdered, this guy that they hung on a cross like a common criminal, was actually the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Okay, and in verse 37, it says, when the people heard this, read this out loud with me. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Let's read that again, that's important. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? How many of you have ever been in a situation where you have been cut to the heart? That means like you're convicted. That's right. Me too. Raise your hand. If you've ever been convicted and you know, oh snap, I, something's up here. Okay? That's exactly what happened to these people. They were cut to the heart and they asked him, Peter, what do we do? And so Peter shared with them the greatest news ever, and I want to share that with you today. Peter told them, there's three things you need to be doing. The first one is, you have to repent of your sins. The second one is, you got to turn to God. you got to live your life for God. And you got to be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. And what I want you to notice that I didn't say, what Peter didn't say was, just repeat these magic words, and you're saved, and you're going to be in heaven. 
Okay, I think we've all heard somewhere where that's been said, this is not for me, you said these words. That, that is not what God calls us to do. Okay, Peter tells us very, very clearly, we must repent of our sins. We must turn to God. We need to be baptized for the forgiveness of our sins in order to receive the Holy Spirit. And what Peter is sharing is that Jesus is a man of action. And Jesus demands action from us. So the word repent, that's an action word. The word repent actually means literally turn around. Okay? How many of us have stuff that we need to turn around from? Even if you're a Christian, I'm sure, you better raise your hands, because I'm sure we've all got stuff that we need to repent of and that we need to turn around for. Um, what Jesus is calling us to do is to give all of that stuff to him. And uh, this isn't for everybody who has their act together, everybody who's got it going on. This is for you. This is for me. This is for all of these teachers and adults here. This is for all of us that Jesus calls us to this. And the really exciting news that happened that day is after Peter got done sharing all this amazing truth, there were 3,000 people who were saved that day. 3,000 people. That's a lot. We don't even have close to 3,000 people here, but can you imagine what that's like to have all of these 3,000 people have that aha moment of, oh God, look what you're doing in my life. Okay, that, ladies and gentlemen, is some amazing and great news. And so what happens next is where we go back to those verses 42 and 47. Get that next slide. Yeah, I'll just read it. They devoted themselves then to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship and the breaking of bread and the prayer. And everybody was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. Okay? They did Bible study. They got together. They prayed. God did some really cool stuff. 44. All the believers were together and they had everything in common. They sold their property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Does that mean that they all lived in the poorhouse? Not necessarily. It just means that, hey, I have to have a loaf of bread. I noticed that you don't have one. Here, why don't you just share it on? Or, hey, I see that your kids are not growing their clothes. My kids have plenty of clothes. Here, share. You know, that's what they did. They worked together. They were together at 46 every day. They continue to meet together in the temple courts. Wow, kind of like what we do here at school. Every day we get together. Uh, they broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Funny, like what we do at lunch. Funny, like what we do a lot of times at breakfast here. Uh, they praised God and enjoyed the favor of all the people. They praised God and they enjoyed the favor. That means they had joy. Hey, everybody say joy. Joy. That does not sound joyful. Joy. Joy. Be, be sincere, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Be sincere. Uh, they were praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Okay, unfortunately, today, I don't know that we're quite adding to that number as daily because we've become comfortable Christians. That's why we've lost. A lot of our joy because we don't hang out together. We don't share as, as a faith family together. Okay, but we we can have this joy. We can claim it. We can worship God. We can get together Bible studies and chapel just like we do. Um, I want to tell you, the last couple weeks at the Leeds house have been rough. <laughs> I'm here to tell you. The last couple weeks at the Leeds house have been rough. Uh, my husband got very sick two weeks ago, and um, he was sick for about three days, ran a fever, um, and uh, he's a great man. And being such a great man, um, he's a sharing man. So he shared his bugs with me and uh, his germs with me, and um, I was very sick for uh, a lot more days than he was. And um, 
I want to share with you that when you find yourself to where you can only sit in the recliner and get up and go lay on the couch and find yourself back in bed, and when you do that day after day after day, something starts happening with your brain. Um, you find yourself very <coughs> lonely, and you find yourself um, in a spot, and you find yourself kind of slipping deeper into a darker place. And um, it, it just happens. We, in our conferences, we, we learned a lot about physiology um, and how the body and the brain all work together. And um, when your body is physically in a spot, then, then things happen in your brain like that, and you see people slipping into depression. Um, so, but I, I want you to know that there is unity in the community. And every time it seemed that I found myself slipping into one of those spots, and I think you all know what I'm talking about. I, I dare say many of you have been in those spots where I've been. And uh, every time I found myself slipping there, I would get a text from someone saying, hey, I'm praying for you. Or I would get an email saying, hey, how are you feeling today? And my responses were um, not always um, super uplifting <laughs> because it was a rough time for these guys. Um, but that's unity in the community, and that's people connecting. I can't tell you how many people offered to buy us groceries and offer to um, bring out meals to our house. That's unity in the community. That's an Acts 2 kind of church. That's an Acts 2 faith, family, body of believers. And you need to get that in your life. You need to be able to find that kind of joy because Jesus offers that to each of us. And when you make that super important decision to say, Jesus, I continue to mess it up, I continue to not do it right. I continue to do it my way, and that's not working. And Jesus says, come here. I've got people for you. I've got unity in the community. I've got people who want to love on you, even though they can't physically be around you for 10, 14 days. They can love on you through a text message or bring you groceries or call you or make sure that you're okay. And um, it takes an investment. It takes an action. Okay? Jesus isn't about lip service. Jesus is about going and doing. He is about your heart. He is about turning and doing the right thing. And, and he wants you to take that step. And if you have never taken that step before, I wholeheartedly encourage you to find someone who has taken that step. Maybe it's one of your peers. Maybe it's one of your teachers or it's an administrator. But take that step and, and let them know, hey, I, I knew to this Christian walk. I know I go to a Christian school or everybody thinks I'm a Christian, but really, this is a new day for me. And you know what? They're going to be so stinking excited. It says in the Bible that the angels throw a party whenever someone comes to Jesus. And so I want that for you. I want that joy for you, and I want you to experience um, that unity in the community like they did in Acts chapter 2. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank you so much um, for these fine ladies and gentlemen that are in this room. I thank you so much for your love for us and that you offer us this unity. You offer us that peace and you offer us that joy. And God, when we find ourselves in that pit of despair, even though we're feeling awful, God, you are there. I'm so grateful for that. And Father, if there is anyone here who has never experienced that or who wants to experience that, God, I just pray that you just bug them like crazy until they finally talk to someone and are able to make you Lord of their lives. Um, God, I just pray that you be with us the rest of this week, that we finish strong so that we can have an amazing fall break and get some rest and come back ready to uh, be about your family and, and continue to, to work in unity. And we love you guys. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen.